So now's a really good time for us to start looking at getting the track to its overall loudness. So one of the first things we're gonna do is just switch our meters over to LUFS. So we can do that by clicking on the IO up here. And under type, we need to switch that to integrated. By default, it's usually RMS. And that's what I'll have it on a majority of the time. In this process, we want integrated, and that's gonna switch it. So we've got peak and LUFS here. Secondly, right at the end of our chain, we're going to add either the vintage limiter or the maximizer. Completely depends on the end result you want, and it's really good to try between the two. In this instance, we're gonna use the maximizer because it's the cleaner of the two, and this is a quite well-produced, clean sounding track. Now this track is going to go onto streaming services. So we're going to have a couple of things we need to really note. Firstly, our LUFS target is going to be around minus 14 overall. So if we focus on a specifically loud part of the track like here, comfortably target that around minus 13 knowing that the other sections of the track that are a little bit lower and ebb and flow a bit more will make up for the overall average of the integrated signal across the whole track and we won't be penalized too much for that. The other thing we need to know is this will get converted to mp3. Apple Music streams at 256 kbps uh, whereas Spotify is variable bitrate from uh, 128 up to 320 and um, places like SoundCloud if you're on a uh, mobile can go as low as 96. All of these can cause issues in conversion and bit rate, especially with a loud song. And this is how you get that horrible digital distortion. So some things to do on the ceiling, you can go to uh, minus 0.3. If you're going to a WAV file and for CD, that is a perfectly safe region to be in. However, if you're going to be converting to MP3 or it's going to be going to streaming services that sometimes have a lower quality. If you're only distributing to Spotify and Apple Music, you'll be fine at around sort of the minus 0.5 region. You could probably get away with 0.3, but we like to play it safe. If you're going to the likes of SoundCloud and some other third party sites, you might want to give it as much as one decibel extra on the ceiling. So you've got that overshoot range when it converts. We're gonna leave it around 0.5. We're gonna switch on true peak as well. True peak limiting takes into account those situations occurring. And then we've got an extra safety net of half a decibel. This track's gonna need about minus five dB in reduction. And it's a pretty fast track with lots of small percussion sounds. It's gonna want quite fast character as well. When we look at the IRCs, I personally like IRC three and sometimes four, depending on the track. So we're gonna have a listen to some of those as well. We shouldn't need any transient emphasis. We're not gonna limit this track very hard. We're not gonna completely crush the transients away. We'll only be catching some of like the larger peaks here. Most of the transient will get through. However, if we were having to limit quite a lot, we could use transient emphasis and bring that up a bit so it still feels as if the transients are there. Remember we looked right at the start at a couple of little problem areas in this track where we've got this particular spike here. We need to play that. And as you can see there, our meters didn't overshoot. The absolute maximum was 0.5 as set by the limiter. Something really important for me to just emphasize to you. In Ozone, if you were to have an extra plugin added in here, for example, let's put the vintage limiter in next. We can even mute it. The maximizer will by bypass into the vintage limiter and will cause clipping. So we just saw that not clip, watch this. Uh, we went to plus 1.8 and plus 0.2, okay, on the left and right channels. So even though this is in here and it's disabled, it's going to cause clipping. We can even see we got the uh, red light or orange lights in logic here for nearly 2 dB of clipping. So that's really important thing to note about iZone. Even if it's disabled, you're feeding that signal into a bypass plugin, okay? So we need to make sure there's nothing in there. We see we won't get those clips. Okay, so it didn't clip that time. Just a really important thing to notice. So we are gonna loop a chunk of the track just here and have a listen and look at what we need.
Okay, so we've reduced the character down to a little bit quicker. Um, I just felt that was a little bit nicer on the some of the percussion elements. Um, and minus 5.5 dB. So that's how much we've come up in level as well. And we're obviously restricting to that 0.5 on the ceiling. Now balance sounds okay, but I am gonna switch between uh, that and pumping. I usually quite like pumping. I'm gonna try clipping as well and just see if anything stands out particularly well to me. Okay, so for me, IRC4 transient is the nicest sounding. I usually really like um, IRC3 pumping. However, on this, um, really, I'm just gonna play it to you. Listen to the low end, listen to the kick. It becomes really, the best description is like farty, to be honest. It just has like an extra rumble that it didn't have before that it just doesn't need. So I'll switch between um, IRC3 pumping and balance so you can hear the difference. I won't switch between the algorithms because it causes a pause. It's just causing like a, a not cool rumble at the bottom. However, I see transient, which kind of makes sense because it's a really transient heavy track, just seems to work the nicest. Yeah, sounds nice and clean. I'm getting a really good balance of the track. You know, the, the masterful thing, it sounds like nothing's happening, which is really, really nice effect. I don't need to add any transient emphasis. I don't think it really needs to work independently at all. Um, so we're not going to stress about the stereo independent side of things. I think that's that's pretty good for loudness. Now, the other thing we could have done was use the vintage limiter. So let me just disable the maximizer for a moment. Uh, and if we set up something similar, let's go true peak we have minus 5.5. I think this limit is a little harder, so we might have to go to minus five, but still. Uh, and um, we can switch between analog tube and modern. Modern's probably gonna be what I prefer. Uh, Character-wise, they respond similarly. So let's take that back down to one, two, five as well. Let's just see if we prefer one to the other here. Now it's So you can hear straight away that limits a lot harder than the maximizer. So we're going to dial that back by about a decibel. Now it's gone. I us. And we can even see in our loft measurement, it's so much louder. Now it's gone. I us. We were so Okay, so analog is the nicest sounding. Both tube and modern uh, affect the low end a little too much, especially the kick drum, it loses its punch, becomes a bit flabby. And that's something to really note with limiting. It's always going to affect your low end more than anything else because the low end, as we can see here from tonal balance, is the, the loudest thing that's always going to be hitting it the most and the hardest and first. Um, I prefer what's going on with the maximizer on this instance, so we don't need the vintage limiter. Remember what I said about having uh, um, anything at the end of the chain, it causes clippings. We don't want that. 
Uh, and that's it. We've kind of we've got our, our ballpark here in our loudness. We've made sure our ceiling doesn't peak. We've looked at the loudest points here and made sure that those are okay with true peak. Uh, and we've got the the loudness and limiting algorithm that we like best with the track. It's really a, a, a subjective choice. You need to listen through and decide what sounds best. Like I have been, focus on the low end. That's what's going to take the most impact. And if you're losing the balance from that, then it's not the right algorithm or you're pushing it too hard or we need to go back and adjust the dynamics and EQ in the mix. All right guys, hopefully that's really helped you move forward in your tracks. Let's move on to the next step.